Good morning, Jeremiah. How are you doing? You started a new project last week? That's cool. Merry New Year, MF Will Black. And thanks for becoming a Patreon backer. Appreciate that, man. I gave you that role on the Discord, too. The pacing of Drifty Sips syncs with the music. The coincidental sips. I know, we actually started on time today, it's crazy. It's much appreciated. Ah, oh, shucks. We are listening to some Undertale OST today. It is on sale on Steam for 60% off right now. So if you haven't uh, played Undertale or you know somebody who hasn't, you can get them a copy of it for $4. Which is uh, it's a really great RPG for only $4. <clears throat> well, we should just get started. I do have a lot to do. Switch to the live scene. How's it going, everybody? I'm Drift from Driftwood Gaming. Thank you so much for coming to the live stream. We're waking up today. We got a cup of coffee uh, in the first stream of 2019. Hey, cheers, everybody. Hope you've had a fantastic vacation holiday thing and uh, you're ready to hit 2019 with a sledgehammer. I don't know if I could lift a sledgehammer this morning, but we're going to try. 
to do some stuff. So I was planning on having this entire town and all of its things completed by this week so we can move on. And we're going to move on, but we do need to just touch up this map and add this stuff. Add some events, some doodads, polish, whatnot. So I'm going to try to knock that out. We're going to try to add ambience. Ambience. I notice when we walk out and we get the rain to happen, it sort of feels very, like, not rainy. Like, it, it looks rainy, but it doesn't feel rainy because you don't hear any, like, shh or anything like that, right? So we need to get some, some rain wind ambiance going on okay this is the general store we're gonna walk in so he needs stuff to sell I'll get this looking snazzy in no time We're rushing it a little bit, just to <clears throat> have something to to show. As per usual, if you have any questions about the engine or any other engine that I cover, feel free to ask, and we'll find the answers together. I'm looking for a table to place like some scales on, so you would imagine he would weigh stuff out to kind of see how much you have to pay. This kind of this kind of thing might work, something like that. Or we can do two of these, like a display case type thing, or just yeah, something like that. How does this look on stacked on top of this? Not too bad. some windows Which one is this? No. There we go. 
That one window makes it look so much better. <clears throat> the boxes look out of place. I kind of put them there to accentuate the separation of the two little areas, but they do kind of protrude up a little bit. He's got a lot of space in here, so I kind of want this to... They look higher than the room, that's a perspective issue. Maybe we should just remove them. <clears throat> if you think it's causing a perspective issue. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Could always throw them back in there, something like that. What about if we put, like... This helps, you know, separate this giant area a little bit, but it doesn't look as high or as tall. So maybe that's a little bit better.
we'll have the NPC standing here. We need like something in the middle here. Don't we have like a middle thing? Yes, yeah, something like this. I have that over here in the fisherman's cooking area. Maybe we don't want to put it in here. Because the fisherman's already doing that. That makes more sense. <clears throat> Hello Omni Slash. Hello Mushri. Good morning, Krillin. <clears throat> Krillin asks, what's everybody working on? It's a good question, Krillin. What are you guys doing today? Krillin is databasing stuff and repetitive event eventing. It's better than mapping, bro. Mm. At least you don't have to do mapping right now. I'd rather be databasing. I want to get a shirt that just says, I'd rather be databasing. Did you guys see um, <clears throat> a while ago SRD's merch shirt? It's just got like the RPG Maker Error logo on it. I thought that was clever. Is this this box feels out of place now, because this is interrupting. This is better. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna have to. Take a few, add a few more things, but then just kind of like settle on something. We have a couple tables to put stuff on, and then we'll add the event itself. <clears throat> the, the NPC. We need to make an NPC for here. Let's put a mortar room and pestle here. Oh gosh, it doesn't look right there. Hmm. These are weird tables. We'll have to doodad something onto them. You love mapping? Well, that's good. Everybody has their strengths, and everybody's a bit different. Mapping is painful for me, but it's a necessary thing. I know that I just need to get it done. Let's go ahead and set up our transfer events, start adding events. And I feel like we should just... <clears throat> Get her done.
Vincent Thindian coming in with a Canadian 2019 super chat. Happy New Year, everyone. May your maps be colorful and non-boxy. Thank you so much for that. Very, very nice super chat. Appreciate that, Vincent. Very nice of you. I hope you're having a good New Year. Very, very cool, my dude. Um, I have a Zoom. Transfer Zoom. That's what I'm looking for. It's really cool using a common event to handle all of your little details because then you can just change all your transfer events easily by changing the common event itself. So we're doing a script call to zoom the player in or zoom the camera in to see the player. And then we're changing the, the type. We're changing the sound effects that play. Like if you knock or you're walking up staircase and I'll have to add that in for each uh, transfer that's it's different so that I can keep the same zoom and everything I'll make a condition for other types so right now there's only two there's steps and then if the variable is set to one then it knocks that's not called sucking up omni slash sucking up is just talking Vincent is putting his money where his mouth is that's called supporting creators And it'll default to this one, this sound effect, every time, because it sets to zero. I'm going to zoom that up a little bit, so it's a little bit quicker. Otherwise, it'll do the duck, 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 with the weight, knock, knock, knock. And then also setting the weather to zero. But here is where we also need to add ambiance. So we're setting the weather effects to nothing. Um, we're also turning off any music effects, which is what we should do. So when we do our transfer zoom, we should also check our music effects and specific, specifically say, um, instead of stop SE, we can say play for Emmy none. So if it is playing a music effect, it'll stop playing a music effect, but I plan to use music effect as uh, the ambiance because it'll stack with background music <clears throat> and sound effects as well. Lockwork, hello, how are you today? Assure and Fish says, I'm worried that the placement of the bed could lead to criminals shoving the shopkeeper into the fire in the dead of night and then stealing all of his transfer events. Preventing all any investigation. That's a that's a crazy observation right there. Asheron. <laughs> Omni slash are you a pirate? I need R Art. Okay. Yeah, me too. That's why I'm doing it myself. Plot twist. I would. I mean, I think it would make sense that you have your bed not like right next to the fire, but like within like three feet of it or three meters of it, so that you can get the warmth of the fire in the cold nights. You know, you probably want to be toasty. Nice and crispy. Will Black says, I'm working on balancing the final boss of his third chapter. Supposed to deal heavy single target damage and debuffs, so finding a balance that doesn't make him overpowered has been taking more time than I expected. Yeah. One thing that you can um, consider is the type of debuffs that you're putting on. If you don't want him to be overpowered, then don't debuff the player's defense with the, the attack. Uh, otherwise, He'll seem like he's not doing uh, enough, it's not powerful enough without the debuff, or it'll be way too powered once they've been debuffed. So like, consider making the debuff like a speed reducer, so the players will get less turns. It depends on how your battle system operates, of course. But don't complement the debuff to the super powerful attack, otherwise you'll have an overpowered 
combination in there, you know. Of course, you could do that if that's what you're going for. That'll, um, what, also, if that is what you're going for, to make it so that if the players are debuffed and then the superpower attacks hits on top of that, you could give the player some way to negate that state. Like, say he's got, like, armor crack, you can make, like, uh, or, or armor shatter, you can give the player some sort of, uh, tech skill that says uh, fix armor or like an item called armor polish that will remove any sort of broken armor state you know so that they can that's the strategy for the boss you have to spend a turn debuff you know removing debuffs otherwise you'll get one shot so some sometimes that happens in RPGs and it depends on how you want to go about it but um, if you do reduce their defense and make the, the, the monster super strong attack cause damage and only reduction is defense, then give the player some way to remove that negative state. Why aren't there pirate battlers? I think there is some pirate battlers on the forums. If you look on RPG Maker web forums, there might be some of them. His bedroom looks a little bare right here. This little corner looks very empty. So I'm gonna do something for his bedroom in here. I thought the, the lamp on the, the top would work fine. That, that could work fine. But this armor kind of looked out of place. Maybe if I go like this with it. Yeah, that looks better. Like some floor plans or something. And then like a little chest. Yeah, that'll work. All right, that's gonna be it's gonna be good enough. Let's add uh, an event, a kicking TV. <laughs> Hopefully, the shopkeeper doesn't use flammable hairspray. Yeah. Who's going to be the NPC? Who wants to be the shopkeeper here? <clears throat> Who wants to operate the general store in the port town? How does... How much does Canadian money transfer to American dollars? Um, I think it's like... 750 per 10... K 
Canadian, like something like ten dollars U.S. is like twelve or thirteen something Canadian. I don't know. I live in New York. Does anybody know how to align show text messages to the center? Yeah, easy, bro. You go inside your show text and there's a little window position thing. So you've got top, middle, and bottom. And you want to align it to a center. Um, you can look at Yanfly's message core plugin. If you have it installed, just leave your cursor in there and a little text thing will pop up and give you some some shortcuts. There's a lot more than this, but here's like a nice little shortcut list <clears throat> to save you some time. It doesn't show the alignment here, but we can go here, plug and help, and go to the message core and look for alignment. Maybe there's something to align. I don't see anything with alignment, but you can put in word wrap and place it in the center. Yeah, 74 Canadian cents. Or a, a US dollar is 74. Or no, a, a Canadian. Isn't it like uh, for one dollar donated in, in Canadian dollars, it's like seventy-four cents U.S. I think, right? Is it the other way around, Vincent? I thought uh, the U.S. dollar was stronger than the Canadian dollar. Well, because it's always fluctuating, Omni. Because sometimes it'll be 76, 78, sometimes it'll be 71, 72. It's always changing. Yeah, it's the bankers that, it's where the investors put their money to, that to decide what's the stronger currency. It's, it's like what currency has more uh, faith, you know? I think the pound is the strongest one right now. I could be wrong. It's like magnets, man. How do they work? <laughs> I don't see anything for a specific alignment, but you can set that. Oh, here we go. The naming window. This is for the name alignment. Position. Ah, you can specifically say where you want the position of the text to, to display. I've never used this right here, to be honest, so I'm curious to see what happens. If we say the position of X text and then we put in the number we want, let's see how that works. Let's do a show text here, just for funsies. And we're gonna say 500. This is at X 500. And then slash position of the Y to, let's say, 500. This is at Y 500. You want it centered, so it depends on your resolution, right? So if you're using 1280 divided by, well, I'll use my resolution, 1104, or is it 1106? 1106 divided by 2. We'll say X is going to be 553. And then position of the Y, I'm using 624 divided by two. We'll say 312. Test, blah. And then I'm just gonna leave this how it is, window bottom and see what happens. We'll give this like some in something. There we go. Uh, 
And if we start, let's do our transfer bit and we'll come in here. So transfer zoom. <clears throat> and we're going to do the actual transfer player to the port town. Pop out here. And face down. Apply that. And then we'll make an event over here that says this door is locked. We'll just say dim bottom or dim middle. This door is locked. And we can play a sound effect here like doom. Yeah, see. Nope. 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 Nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, click. This door is locked. <clears throat> And we need to tie the port town transfer to here. We've already made a, a little more flashy door that you walk through. So let's go ahead and change the transfer from the woodworker to the general store here. And fade to black and face up. One little thing I want to change. I'm kind of following a convention. Whenever you go out when you zoom out of something, it's fading to white, and when you're zooming into something, it's fading to black. Little thing. So let's test the text thing. It kind of fast forwards through it. I wonder why. Maybe we have to set it to something different. Let's see, when we use this, do we have to say, this wouldn't matter, right? Maybe we have to use middle. Position of the X, and we say that. Position of the Y, we say that, and then blah, blah, blah. I got all my money tied up in Final Fantasy XI, Gil. <laughs> so now it's waiting for input. This is at... Oh no, it doesn't wait for input. It just kind of goes through. So... I'm not sure how that's actually working, changing the position, because... It's still saying in the middle, right? It's putting it in the window wherever we want. But it is putting the X across the screen. Maybe it's because I have like word wrap on enabled or something. I would say mess around with the commands that are in the message core to get the desired result. I also liked using Galv's, um, a Galv plugin. I'm considering putting that back in. Why would you want to play that? Go for nine. Because 11 is better than 14, in my opinion. 11 is way better than 14. 14's got its, uh, its appeal, right? Big Honcho says, looks really good. How are you doing, Big Honcho? How's your day going?
there's a new free um, Final Fantasy XI server that launched like a few months ago in beta, and then they just released like out of beta. It's called Eden. Uh, I actually linked it this morning, coincidentally, in, um, in the Discord chats under the multiplayer chat. I list like multiplayer games and whatever. Um, but yeah, there's a new server called Eden, and supposedly it's got a lot of the bugs fixed that um, Nisomi and the other free servers had just running for a long time. It doesn't have that drawl error where you can't see things unless you run away and come back. Um, they're going to make this one a 75 cap, well it is right now. Uh, it's got the first two expansions, Zealart, Chains of Promethea, and they are they have most of the content ready for... Um, Otter gone, but it's not like fully incorporated yet. But they plan to fully incorporate Otter gone and then leave it at that. So I'm looking forward to playing on this. I, I downloaded it last night and installed it, but I didn't have time to play it. It was already kind of late. So I'm going to hop on the this server today, maybe. And just check it out to see how, how, how it works. I still have my accounts on... Um, on retail, but I just don't play it anymore. I don't really play them. It's kind of cool with the trust, but it, it it defeats the purpose of like an MMO. Really, it's more of like a single player game. But I'm gonna see if uh, if my wife T can get into something from 2005. It's like the 2005 to 2006 version of an MMO. And it's very hard. Like, it was very hard from what I remember playing at that time. But we'll, with, with somebody, you know, to play with, it's gonna, it should be a lot more fun. And Eden is free to play, so they have like three or 400 people. I'm not trying to promo or anything. I'm just, like, you mentioned it. The only Final Fantasy I played is 13. Oh, that's that's terrible, Vincent. You you probably played the worst one in the series. Charles and Nico, how are you doing, man? It's good to see you. Thanks for coming to the live stream. On the bright side, if I de if I decide to try any other Final Fantasy, at least it's going to be better without a doubt, man. Without a doubt. Chiefy Chief, how are you doing? I was helping somebody, trying to help somebody, um, sin or something with the text and, and I'm thinking that the best way to go about it is using Galv's plugin. I don't have it installed here yet. Um, I don't know if it's fully compatible but let's find out. Um, I was trying to use Yenfly's message core to to like set the X on the Y position of a, of a show text. Uh, in the meantime I was decorating this trying to finish the port town completely uh, and then we're going to <clears throat> excuse me add some ambience some uh, music effects and stuff. So we pretty much got this area set up. I do need to test the transfer events real quick so I can say let's move on, you know. And then we'll, we'll go to um, more QOL stuff, quality of life stuff. See how it's raining but I don't hear any like That'd be cool to have like a little bit of more, a little bit more ambiance. If we go here, the door is locked. I think I need to make this uh, event not enter. Like, I need to make a player touch. Because right now it shows the text and then it jumps to the next thing right away. Which is not what we want. So, um, let's try to find something else. This changes this event real quick to player touch. And it'll just teleport us out. And we'll test that one last time. Otherwise it feels pretty good. We'll walk around the map a little bit. We're listening to some Undertale music. This is a game that is currently on sale, 60% off on Steam if you want to check out Undertale. Uh, you can get it for $4 right now. No problem, lock work. We're going to... Uh, I'm not done yet. I'm going to add some doodads to the tables right here. They, this is where it feels a little barren. Also, we can walk on the walls here, which is not what I want. So I'll just region restrict this to save time, you know, in a hurry here. We're doing the test to see what uh, messes up layers, and we can walk on the walls. We'll fix that. This looks good. Good, good call. 
on the the box is taking up too much space, feeling too high. The, the bags of like whatever these are feel a little bit better. If we go down here, the door is locked. All right. We can add like a doodad, or know what, you know, we'll add an event that animates a fire in the fireplace here. Or we'll just do some Terax lighting and make this have like an orange glow right here. Something like that. Let's hit F10 and see what doodads we can place real quick. Tools. How about a pickaxe? And we'll change the settings on it. Let's change the scale of it down to like 75%. A couple of pickaxes will look better than one. Um, and then rope. Rope is always a good thing to have. I want to edit that last rope. It looks a little stiff. So we're going to we're going to scale this rope down a little bit. And change the position just a little bit. settings. <clears throat> Let's change the other one too. Just a little bit. There it is. Lockwork just subscribed. Thank you so much for the sub, Lockwork. Really appreciate it. Finish the edit and save and close. <clears throat> All right, so this is looking good. We've got that fixed. The transfer event works fine. You can walk back in. That looks good. I noticed that the the common event should happen probably after the zoom. Ikumin just subscribe. Thank you, Ikumin. All right. How are we handling this, <clears throat> this zoom when it comes to the weather? The transfer zoom happens early, and then all of this stuff happens. Maybe we want to put the transfer zoom after the move event for these, just so that the weather in the tent doesn't... Let's just see what happens, you know? And I'll start right here, player start position. If it rains, it doesn't always rain though. It didn't rain that time. Ah, you need that to happen to fix the zoom. So this, is, this is why I had it like that. What if I put it right here? Flash 15x asks if I have both chats open. I do. Ah, that works a little bit better. You see this? So that it's raining, it doesn't immediately change this, the tent screen. It does it like after half of it's over. That's good. I'm going to leave it like that, actually. It doesn't always rain. Merry New Year, Ikumin. So I should change that on these other events as well. Where did I put it? I put it right above the sound effect play after the first... And second move around. Okay. So we cut this. Paste it right there. It keeps the tent screen 
and weather effect for just that second longer to, to maybe keep the immersion a little bit better. It will also change the Emmy music effect another second later. So we're, we're increasing our ambiance type of our feel of the game. That gave you an idea, Alexander? Awesome. That's great. Yeah, it should say it should work on both. This so Twitch. Chat test. Bang. It works. Uh, YouTube live chat test. YouTube live has a sl a little bit more delay than than the Twitch chat. But it still works. It goes through an API. Like in Chrono Trigger, where there were no enemies, only appearing in the forest when it rained. There were new enemies? I have a time of day and weather system in place, says Omni Slash. Though with the demo, I'm turning those features off. If you do it right, they're really cool features to have. But what happens sometimes is you end up on maps that are like really nice looking, but it's so dark you can't see what's going on. So when you have like the day-night system with the tent screens and stuff and weather effects, try to keep your maps visible because even though like realistically it would be very dark, the player doesn't want to look at a black screen completely dark with just a little circle or something because it's not fun, right? You can't see all the work that's been put into it. Unless you're hiding something or you need that to be completely dark so to scare the player or something, right? You know, Or to hide like really, really bad tile set mapping you can do that but that's usually not the best thing making better maps is the better idea than just trying to hide them these shops should charge extra since they probably have insanely high flood insurance premiums <laughs> yeah of course new the blue guys who headbutt you either for all but one of your HP or did one HP damage. Is it Galv's message style? Yes, Lockwork. That's what we're gonna check. Thank you so much for reminding me. Uh, message pop-ups. Hold on. Let me go to the Galv script page and then... Uh, doesn't necessarily need to be the timed one. Here, I'll show you what I'm looking at over here. Galp has 74 plugins? Are you kidding me? This guy's baller. Backing him on Patreon. I've been backing him on Patreon for a while. Audio visual. Probably an audio visual. Variable, um, message styles, I suppose it is that. Alright, let's get the plug in here. Get this, cut this, and put it in the right spot. zip file. <clears throat> now we'll add that to our plugin manager.
and we basically just use slash pop. And I always use pop zero to show this event, but if you're showing text somewhere else, you can do slash pop and then you can target the event number. If you use a negative number, it shows you the follower. And you can use A to specify an actor that says something. Or if you put in two um, arguments to this pop function, it'll assume that's an X and Y location. So let's let's try to do this. go to where we were at right here and instead of using this we'll go paste this and say 553 what was the other one? 302 this is a message centered uh, message with a centered anchor with the anchor, oh my gosh, in the middle of the screen. It should be anyway. And I think we actually need to say, like these stay default, right? So you don't mess with these, just window bottom. If not, we'll, we'll adjust and see what we have to do for this to work. I may also have conflicting problems with the number of plugins I have. Uh, it may be that it's also, it could be out of date. Oh, I need a window arrow.png for this to work. So this is also offered on the website. So what we'll do is we'll download the demo and I'll show in folder and I'm going to just to create a, extract it uh, into its own folder real quick. And then I could go into the IMG pictures wherever it's at um, system maybe as you put it in system yeah let's take the arrows okay also he's got different windows right we're not gonna overwrite uh, overwrite our original window.png but we'll add the extras and the arrows and also the shadows for those of you who don't know some of this it's very simple we can highlight multiple things to copy if you want to select multiple things you can press the control and left click and just pick what you want you can also select a starting point and then hold shift and then um, left click again while you're holding shift to select a uh, from here to here selection and you can remove things too so if we went like this um, you can com combine these. I'm going to deselect window with a control left click and take these couple of extra things to make everything go in one simple process. We copy from this folder and then we go to our games folder and this will have to be inside the IMG system because right, we don't have the shadow. Oh, we do have the shadows. I'm not going to overwrite anything, so when it asks do I want to replace, I'm going to skip the two shadow ones that we already have, but we're adding the window 1, 2, and 3 PNG as well as the window arrows PNGs. So now when the game tries to check for them, they'll be there. Let me go ahead and uh, consolidate my windows again for my sanity, for my OCD so that I can see all the chats. Code Awesome, hi, how are you doing? Merry New Year. Mog Hunter's Time System plus Edison Lighting. Good combo, good combo. It's a shame that chats from Twitch and YouTube are keep separate. Well, they're on the, the actual recording, like the stream, should they should pop up on the screen. So they do like get added together on the stream. You just if you're looking at just the the, ta the text log, uh, then uh, you'll have to have both of them open if you want to see what everybody's saying. I'm trying to bring some of my YouTube audience over to Twitch. So if you would be very kind to go over to Twitch.tv/driftwoodgaming, uh, links in the description below if you don't want to type, and, and just give me a follow. It'd be very very helpful if you have a. Uh, Twitch Prime, you could always subscribe uh, if you want to, but you don't have to. It's just, it will help me just to have more followers as well, which doesn't cost you anything. 
So uh, thank you for considering that. My YouTube numbers look okay, but my Twitch numbers are pretty low. You know, I don't have, uh, I don't stream on Twitch. I haven't streamed on Twitch over the last three or four years that I've been doing this, uh, but a handful of times, barring the last couple of weeks where I've been uh, streaming on Twitch approximately four to five times a week. All right, let's test it out now. We've got this. It should be installed and, and the, the art file should be in the system folder and everything should be there. So when we walk inside and we talk to our Damien spray, there we go. This is the message with the anchor in the middle of the screen. So it puts the anchor point where you say the X and the Y position is and I divided my X axis, my, my screens, my game resolution by half and then my Y, X and Y, both of them divided by half. And so it put the anchor point right there and, it, and there you go, that's your, your message. And it doesn't affect, it shouldn't affect other text boxes. Let's, let's go to the door where it says this is locked. It should look the same. It should be very, like, just the same default. The door is locked, right? So let's change that as well. And I, I guess I'll start using Galves. I did plan to add this at some point, and since somebody asked about it, now's the perfect time to add it. For all of our show text, we'll use slash pop. And then if we want to say this event, we just put a zero in there. And usually you're gonna be doing slash pop zero to save yourself some time from figuring out where the X and the Y position should be. But if you specifically want it to be somewhere, uh, like we illustrated in the last one here, you can say, put it at this X and Y position. Otherwise, if you use pop zero, it'll use the location of that event, wherever that event is at. Merry New Year, can you really say that? You can You can say anything you want to say, Boro. You'll have repercussions for some of the things you say. And you see the door is locked. It puts it right there where the event is. And I like that a lot better than, it just feels much better. This door is locked. Gello says spaghetti is lecker. YouTube. Spaghetti. Very nice. I'd like to stay on Twitch, says Vincentis. But not all streams allow you to switch to 720p, which slows my laptop when making games. Really? It doesn't let you go to 720p? That's a shame. Plus, you can't rewind the stream until after the stream. Yeah, both, both uh, platforms have their pros and cons. For sure. You already said that, Ikumin, and that I wished you a Merry New Year back. Oh wait, is this Ikumin's brother hopping on? You can watch your first impressions on TV. That's pretty cool, honestly. Slash, you just have your you have a TV hooked up to your computer, or you're using like a uh, smart TV. What kind of TV you got on me? What are you rocking, bro? Flash fifty next says, "Hey Drifty, would you say the music in the Legend of Driftwood are okay to use for a commercial game? No, for a free-to-play game, yeah. The music in Legend of Driftwood are from OC Remix, so." Like, if, it's, if you're not making money on it, they're cool with you using their music. You have to credit them. I spent hours putting together the uh, song randomizer to show who made what song, and the end credits are huge, because even though they're not all using the game, there's a song randomizer that can call, like, 70 different tracks. So, um, you'll have to credit them, and you'll have to um, not make money on your game if you use their stuff. So, yeah, Legend of Driftwood is a free-to-play game. And I spent a long time getting all the credits right. But other than that, yeah, go for it. 
All right, we finished that map. We tied it together. Did we get this transfer event set up? Port Town. Yeah, yeah. And then from here, we fix this one, right? It goes to... The transfer zoom goes to... Transfer player, woodworker. Nope. This is supposed to go to the fish store. Let's test all of our transfer events. Let's start here. We walk into town. Actually, let's go to the world map and and transfer our set test all of our transfer events from the world map. This is what's going to tie the player in. Do some beta testing. Is it okay if I send an animation I'm working on via Discord? It does not have anything to do with the stream, by the way. Sure, as long as it's you know, um, it's not like a, a bad one. As long as it follows all the guidelines. It could be bad, it just has to follow all the guidelines. Oh, I see a little layering issue here. Is this from the doodads, or is this actually on the map? I'm glad I'm testing this. So that looks very immersion breaking. This is not a doodad, this is simply from the tile set. So let's go to the tile set and change that. This should be the inside town, probably on the C layer. Ah, right, because this is supposed to be the top of a bookshelf. But I'm usually putting this against a wall. So I'm going to just go like this. For this case, this is where I'm using it. So very specific case change in here. That's fine. Otherwise, I could just use um, region restrictions if I want the player to be able to walk past it. The transfer event from the right side and walking left puts you on the right side of the town. But if you enter the transfer event from the top, or the, the, the town, you start at the top. So you can kind of decide what part of the town you want to enter. If you enter here, got this map. Everything, we just tested this one a little bit today, so this one's good to go. Door's locked here. This transfer event works. He's got his move route. He's gonna go through and cook fish and clean it and all that stuff. We could use more interactables for sure. We need to add some interactables. We need to call the shop processing right here. Our animated sign did that in a sprite oh you're using ps4 on your regular TV that's cool you found an Xbox one one in the trash at work it's awesome dude Now it looks better. Now it doesn't look like we're putting our head underneath the bags. What? We have this weird thing where we go through the headboard. Okay, we gotta change this. This could be star, but this... Why is it doing that? Oh, right, right, because I've extended the sprites. So this has to be a star, but I've and I've extended the, the sprites so that the normal sprite would fit with his head on the pillow. So we have to fix this. I do want the player to be able to, to sit on the bed. How does it look uh, on our starting t uh, house? Does it do the same thing here? Oh, we're going to have an auto run event, aren't we? I think so. But I need to test to see how it looks. Did, did I just overlook that, or did I fix that with some sort of region events? That's fine. The auto run can happen. Hey, Silver Starlight, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a fantastic new year. Snuh, 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 snuh. Alright. Yeah, it does that here as well. So maybe I need to fix...
Okay, I have an idea. We just edit the tile set. Easy, easy, easy. This is on C? Yeah. Instead of setting this to a star, we're gonna set it to just as an O. Because we have our characters with big heads and stretched out. Well, not big heads, but longer. They're stretched out. Their heads have actually been shrunk. But... They've been stretched on the x-axis by 50%, so they look taller. You ready for the snus -na, na My favorite SE so far. That looks better. We fixed it. Problem is we can walk on the wall, so I know how to fix that too. We just go uh, with region, re we'll use Yanfly's region restrictions. Easy, easy fix and just set a cannot walk on that right there. And we'll have to do the same in the other house as well, unfortunately. So we may need to move some stuff around. Like for example, let's take this and bring it down one. Okay, I have to redraw from the floor. Okay, that's fine. We'll just go like this, boom. And then take the fireplace, put that back down. And then draw this bed like that. And then region restrict. But we fix it. And you can still walk up here, I believe. So you can still walk up here, but you can't walk down on that. So it doesn't let you walk on this bed, which I'm actually okay with, because this is not your bed. This is the shopkeeper's bed. You're not supposed to lay down in the shopkeeper's bed. So this is fine. But when it comes to your bed, you are able to walk on it. I believe, right? Did I, did I bork that? I think it... I think I got it, but I need to double check because now I don't remember if I did. Hey, this is my excuse to snus 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 it up. Couldn't you just click the up arrow on the tile set option? Maybe. Maybe we could. Yeah, works fine. If we needed to keep messing with it, I would just mess with the directions on the tile set. But we don't need to anymore. We got it. Let's play some piano. What's our key? Oh, the song changed. Okay, never mind. I want to add more to that piano, too. I want to add a lower octave. It would be cool to add a lower octave, you know, so that we can... They do play on separate channels, so they kind of have, like, the ability to harmonize, like, playing chords and stuff. You send it to me. You have copyright music? Yeah, definitely not playing it on the stream. Damn, them keyboard piano skills. <laughs> yeah, it's a keyboard piano. It's great. 
I have a tutorial on that on the on uh, the YouTube if you want to see how I did that. It's pretty simple. It's a common event. And in hindsight, I know how to um, improve upon it and not require the player be in a specific spot. You can technically do that at any point. That was majestic. Well, it's as, it's as best as I can do it with one octave. <laughs> That's why I want to add another octave below, or below it. Like if you're holding shift as well, you can go to the lower octave. Or even the next key, set of keys down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Left shift and right shift could also be. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that's not the way it would look on a like piano, because you would have like dot 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 but whatever. It's just like all straight across for every semitone. Alright. We need some um some music effects. Let's let's scour the web forums for some music effects, some free to use music effects. RPG Maker Web Forum um, ME Now let's go back. Let's just go here. You guys probably want to see what I'm actually doing. We could make our own, but I'm afraid that when I load Audacity, it's going to mess up the the audio of the stream and then I have to reload the stream and that creates two video files on YouTube. It's just a hassle. I, I do all that off camera now because it messed up my stream one time. It's trying to load the same uh, audio devices in another application. So I might, I might just make the, the Emmys off camera. It's not that exciting to watch me do that anyway. I'm just like going... <laughs> Or I'm like grabbing something and I'm going like and making sound effects, you know. And you just you stare at audio. So yeah, we'll make our our music effects off camera and then I'll show them off. Probably tomorrow. Uh, is it okay if it has the smash reveal music or not? Uh, um, you know, Nintendo said that they were going to allow people to use their content now for vi for video review purposes and critique. Um, I'm still very sketchy about it. Like, I don't want to put Nintendo music uh, in my videos for YouTube because it's just it's so finicky. The system is so finicky. You can get claimed like like that so easy. Will you do some more Game Maker Studio 2 stuff? Absolutely, Coldfire. I love Game Maker Studio 2. I'll try to do something on Friday. I'll try to add. I'll do another GMS2 stream on Friday. The majority of my audience are here for RPG Maker stuff, but a lot of them are multi-engine game devs too. So I have some viewers as well for GMS too. Not as many, but still some people are there for it. I'm not sure, Borrow. They'll shut down any game 
with their IP, if it gets big enough, you will get a cease and desist. They've recently, as of like a few weeks ago even, come around and said, okay, we're not going to keep claiming everybody's video for using our content. I guess enough time has passed and analytics have came in so that they can see that it's actually not helping them by being this way. I think they're abolishing the Nintendo Partner Program where they take your ad rev and then give you a portion of your ad rev if you're using their content. Omni says, I want the fairy music pack on the front page, but I need to wait until it's on sale. It's a good idea. I'd buy the game just for that sexy sound effect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Health DC. Do I need any dino monster sprites? Ah, eh, probably not, you come in. I have some of your, your dino sprites though, they're cool, bro. Keep doing it, they're, they're gonna get better for sure. Now we just need some Zelda Ocarina of Time melodies. Hmm. We still need to design this map, right? We need to put a castle here, an exterior, and then make the interior of the castle. But that's that's a far, a little bit farther away. Uh, okay, speaking of more ambiance, though, let's go through the maps and see what we can what we can add to to spice up the ambiance. We can have each map with its auto run event. Since we're setting our music effect to zero, you know, and our screen tint back to nothing and our weather effect turned off, upon every transfer, we can have every map have its own variable chance to be uh, screen tinted and rainy and whatnot. So let's start at the top on the world map. What kind of weather should we have for the world map? Let's see what auto run we have. This is our auto run at the beginning. This one's no longer doing anything. If character selected one, make the image smaller. Okay, right. And if it's character selected two, it's an auto run at race event. So it just happens every time. And it's changing our actor images so that we look like a small sprite on the world map, but when we zoom in, we're a bigger sprite again. So we're not gonna do anything with that one. This was just a event place to show an animation at a certain point. This is a transfer event. So I need to zoom out and find like, I have like a parallel on here, I think. Or uh, an initialization event going on somewhere. At least I thought I did. What's this? Temp tracker. Right, I can turn this off. I can destroy this one now. The temp tracker. What's this? This is the starting position of the airship. Okay, we can do stuff in here as well. Since this is an auto run race event that's already happening, we'll use this as like our theme setter as well. So we'll control uh, a random variable, control a variable. I think I already made one for this. Called chance to rain. And we'll set it to a random one to 100. We'll make a conditional branch checking that variable, what did it get? If it got greater than or equal to 50, then we can do stuff with that. 
let's let's give it a chance to snow as well. So we'll say greater than equal 81. Otherwise, copy paste it itself inside the else handler. 51. And the second one doesn't need an else handler. So if it rolled 81 or higher out of 100, then it'll start to snow. And then otherwise, if it rolled over 50 or higher, it's going to um, rain. And if it didn't roll either of those, it's not going to do anything. And because every transfer event resets it to turn the rain off, it won't be raining. Yeah. So we'll set the weather effects. Set our ambiance. We're gonna let it. Huh, we have we can storm and we can snow. So let's set this to one without waiting for completion. Let's do another um, condition in here. So I'm gonna edit this and change it to allow an else handler. Copy and paste this inside the else handler. And then get rid of the else handler on this one. And change the numbers. So if it goes over, let's say 41, it'll rain. If it goes over 61, it'll storm. If it goes over 81, it will snow. So we'll copy this. Put this in here and change this to storm. Copy this, put this in here, change this to rain. And otherwise, if it rolled 40 or less, it won't do any of those things. It'll just stay with nothing. But we also want to change the tint screen. We want to change the color of the screen depending on what happens. Can you tell me how to change the character in every level? That is too broad of a statement, Ikumin. Be more specific. By level, what do you mean? Do you mean character level of the player? Of the character, of the actor? Do you mean level of the dungeon? And when you mean when you say change the character, how do you mean change the character? Do you mean the, the way the character looks? The character's stats? Actually switch to a different actor? A little more specific and I might be able to help you. OmniSlash says, I did buy the Fantasy Battlers Volume 1 and some other Fantasy Packs, Battler Packs. That's cool. You found an add-on for Yanfly's Message Core that aligns text. Oh, cool, Lockwork. Yes, I'm going to check it out, Spaghetti. I'll check it out on the Discord after the stream. Speaking of that, if you would like to join the Discord, link is in the description below. We hang out there after the streams and before the streams. I'm pretty much there passively all day. And I check in actively for a few minutes here and there in between stuff. On the topic of mapping, I've been practicing FSM tiles by trying to make a terrace farm village. But the river tiles don't play nice with the dirt ones. I noticed that too, Vincent. Isn't that annoying? I, but I want to try shift mapping with that. I think this should work. We're going to do some tent screens and then Vincent will take a look at how to shift map some, some of those tiles to work together. I'm not saying it'll work. I'm just going to try it to not have it auto tile and make it look super weird. Chaos Theory, how you doing? Happy New Year. Glad you made it, man. So for when it's snowing, we'll tint the screen to one frame, not waiting. We'll give it a little bit of a gray scale so that it takes some of the color away. And we're going to add a little blue. And maybe take away some of the others. I'm going to manually put these in. Negative 10, negative 10, and then 20. Also 20. To see how that looks. 
We'll copy this, paste this for storm, and change this to 0, 0, and then make this 10, and make this 10. I'm curious what I actually use for the town, because I may want to change all of these around as well. Let's look at the port towns auto run. I'm using negative 10, negative 5, 10, 10 for rain. And I liked it, so let's go with that for on the world map too. Negative 10, negative 5, 10, 10. I believe. Yeah. It will change the weather effects to be five frames, but not waiting. We don't need to wait. And then we'll increase the uh, the the numbers here. So we'll make it negative 20, negative 10, 20, 20. Here. And then even further push these numbers. Here we'll say negative 30, negative 20, 25, and then like 40. snowing yeah and all of these should have the transfer zoom yeah transfer zoom I think I went through all of the maps and added transfer zoom that's just the label here's where we need transfer zoom as well We'll specify each map's chance to rain and, and snow and all that. That way, like caves and stuff, you won't have that going on. Let's put our starting position here. Huh, we're having a problem with uh, the icons not showing on the... Do you notice this? Event mini label's not showing icons right now. Wonder why. Now they are. It's weird. Okay, so it's raining, it got darker. Our um, character didn't change the graphic. It should have been smaller, right? Oh, because we didn't set the variable at the beginning. It will change if we actually start at the beginning where we have our initialization event that controls all these things. This time it's not raining. If you go inside here, it, it always stops raining. But we can set that in town as well. This time it's either raining or snowing, or uh, storming. I want to see if it gets to the snow. And it even looks more snowy. And it's randomized. Easy way to do it, right? And then it's got nothing. And it re-rolls every time you reload the map. It's storming. Yeah. I like that. That'll work. Now let's do the same thing for inside the town. We can take this kind of setup right here, copy it, and put it for where, uh, like, in certain areas that we'd want that to, to play, like that. The world map. In the village probably already have an auto run right here's an yeah here's our auto run we'll just paste that right there in the dungeon nah we don't want that going on none of these 
The floating islands can have it though, right? So we'll have a, a staging point. This is a parallel. And we just need an auto run that, that does this. So let's check. This is a parallel. This is our auto run that moves the character around. Let's make a new auto run with an erase event. And we paste this in here to control the weather and the tint. And this is going to be world weather control auto run. And now we can just take this auto run event and paste it throughout the others. Is this an auto run? No, that's our parallel for transfers. Paste that there. Paste that there. And one for here. Did we set our transfers up? Yeah, we did. But this map isn't done. Alright. So this should actually change as we walk through the map, which might be a little too much change, but we'll see what happens. Wait, so snow can happen anytime? Yeah, if on certain maps. Not like inside of a, a house or a cave can't rain or snow there and because of the way that I set it up using a common event inside like the zoom transfer event it'll turn off all the weather and the tents anytime you switch to, anytime you transfer and each map has to call its own particular weather if I want it to be there so instead of adding it and then removing it in all these places I remove it everywhere and then I just add it where I want Is there any plugins for a background music audio increaser? Audio increaser? You mean just like a volume, like to raise the background music? You can just change that in the settings. And if your if your audio is too quiet from the beginning, you can take it into Audacity, process it. The method you want to use is um, normalize it to zero, and then limit it to negative three decibels and then normalize it again and repeat that process until it's loud enough. You lose a little bit of quality every time you clip the edges, that's why you only do negative three. And then you normalize it to zero, negative three, normalize to zero, negative three. And all of this, it'll make it so that it, like, it'll be the same volume, even if you're whispering, like if you're, if you're doing that to your own audio, your volume of you screaming will be the same volume level of you whispering. So that's a good way to process your audio. There's obviously better techniques than that, but that's a very simple way to process it. And then you can just uh, re-export those in Audacity, it's free, uh, as OGG or M4A, and then and put those in your game. And then you'll have like more of a, everything will be about the same volume level. It's called mastering, it's a process of mastering, it's taking all of your audio tracks, like on your CD, CD or whatever, whatever you're doing, your album, and you make them about the same volume. So one isn't quieter or louder than the other. They're all using like the same filter, like main output and like same filter process so that they all have a uh, homogenized feel. Like you don't, like obviously not the chord progressions and the actual musicality of it, but the volume level and the dynamics of it. You want to increase the audio in-game. You press escape, and um, you mean not let the player do it, but you do it manually. That's easy. Um, you can also do that in an event, right? If you, you make a parallel process, and you do whatever conditions you want, right? Depending on when or how you set your conditions. Um, 
set conditions for increasing. And then whatever, if your conditions are met, you just change BGM. You can fade out the background sounds, play all your stuff here. BGM, you say? So you can play the same BGM at a different volume level. So it'll be like, if it's really low, you play the BGM at 10, and then you make another condition, and then this condition, now it's at like 20, and then the 30, and then 40. So you end up playing, play BGM the same multiple times. I mean, you could do that. I just found out that FSM allows curved roads. Yeah, they have a lot of curved stuff. Curved walls. Curved roads. Curved dungeons. Curved caves. It's really cool. FSM is solid, solid um, DLC. It's, it's really good tile set. It comes with a good sample project. And it plays nicely with the rivers, so that's good. Oh, we were gonna look at shift mapping after we did that pasting. Did I put it everywhere I needed it to be though? I made this auto run event with an erase event. We, we need to test that a little bit. But um, I could put this in here. I don't need the player tracker on here now because I was testing stuff. And I made a better event for that, for this. So I can erase this temp tracker event, right? That, that does the weather. And paste in our, oops, paste in our one we created that has more options. But yeah. And we can put that in the graveyard too. <clears throat> Do that. Zoom out a little bit. Stuff event. Yeah, we're going to. This doesn't need it. This doesn't have any purpose. We're going to delete this stuff event and double click here. Actually, just paste. I'm going to paste it at the beginning. Don't I already have an auto run? Yeah, I do. Right, okay. So, whoa, chill. Let's just take this. Copy that. To the graveyard. Paste that. There we go. So now the graveyard can have that same tent going on. Did I do uh, the transfer zoom and all these transfers? Transfer zoom here. Yeah, I did. I'm pretty sure I did. <clears throat> nice. Very nice. Can you actually make a good game on the first try? I don't know. Probably not. Can you do anything really good the first time? Probably not. 
It's possible. It's just improbable. You have to take things into consideration, and you can make a good game for your first try. Like, not bad for your first try. Or like, when, you, when you're judging something like that, you can always be like, not bad for their age, or not bad for their experience level, or not bad for their first one. So if you, if you take things into consideration, you can make a good game for your first game. Is it going to stack up to um, the game you're going to make five years from now? No. Will the game you make five years from now be ten times better than the game you make now? Probably. And the thing is, when you're working on a project, even as you're working in the same game, the stuff you did, like, months ago, you're going to be like, I don't like that stuff because I'm much better now. And you're always going to be in that process of, oh, I'm getting, I'm better now than I was months ago. Uh, so the other stuff I did is not as good as I could do it again if I had to. And that will always happen. That will always be that way. The stuff that you've done in your past will, uh, like the, the projects that you've worked on in the past, and even, even, if you're, even if you're in the same project, the maps and whatever resources that you did, even if you're coding a, a plugin or something, you're going you're gonna to not be 100% happy with it because you know that now you're better than that. Like you've, you've come to a better, you're better at it. So the other stuff is not going to stack up in comparison to yourself. And it's only healthy to compare to yourself uh, for your experience level. It's not really good to make a lot of comparisons uh, because it doesn't really help anything. It doesn't really help you. But if you compare to your own work in the past, then you can see your growth or lack thereof. So the best comparison you can make when you're comparing projects is your work now to your work in the past. I scrapped my first game four times, says Krill in it. Will Black says, I'm on year three of my game. Chapter one is not nearly as good as chapter two, which is not nearly as good as chapter three. Right, right. Big Honcho says, are you going to sell this game when it's done? Yes. Probably yes, if you spend three years making the game while learning. Yep. Yeah, I do plan to sell this one. I've resisted to go back and change chapter one and two. It's a nice stroll through your own growth. Yeah. Besides, if you if you go for that and you go back and keep changing your old stuff over and over and over, you'll never release it, right? You have to kind of just settle and compromise. Like, okay, in my head, it would look di much different. It felt much different. But this is what I was able to execute. And as long as it's not buggy and completely broken, you're going to have to just accept it at some point, right? In our head, we've got these crazy ideas. But then executing those ideas is what's really important. Everybody has ideas, but are you able to pull them off is the big question. Somebody can link music on background? It's the Undertale OST, Gib Gibbon. Speaking of Undertale, it is currently on sale on Steam, 60% off right now. So for $4, you can get one of the greatest RPGs ever made. Debatable. Drifty's going to have some tough competition this year with The Last of Us 2 and Death Stranding. My money's on natural sport. All right, Vincent, there you go. Gosh, it, it, the time flies, and then I, I, don't, I feel like I don't get enough done. There's just so much to do. Game design is massive. It's such a massive undertaking, putting out a project that's not just... Complete dog throw up. Anyway, I've got a few minutes. I'm going to just play the game um, and see how it feels. We'll set my starting point here and, and do some beta testing for 10 minutes. Play through the game. 
Oh, I need to do a couple of things, right? Go to my system and change this to the starting placeholder and start transparent. All RPG game is massive. All who pick RPG Maker think making RPGs is so simple. It can be simple if you're if you're happy with like a, a a lot of default, right? Everything is there to make a game. You don't have to create anything besides maps. You'd still have to. Well, no, there's there are actually preset maps. You actually don't have to be creative at all to make an RPG. To make a good one, though, that's a whole other story. I need to update the credits too. I've added quite a few resources since I've upgraded, uh, updated these credits. I have all of that in a text file, so why don't I update that now? So here we are. You can close that. Um, is it this one? Yeah. I update this text log anytime I change anything, anytime I add new stuff. So let's copy this and go to this, where's my credits event? And then we just overwrite this text. But up to there, paste. There we go. Making it larger, so I'm also going to increase the speed. It's really weird how it presents this, but whatever, it seems to work. I guess if you start with a tab, like right here, like this is tabbed out, so it just shows like a space, but this is like not tabbed, so. There it is. All right, new game. Let's get the Easter egg. Easter egg. Oh, what? Driftwood. You are not the driftwood, or are you? Anyway, here's a commemorative piece of wood. You obtained driftwood. It's just a little Easter egg. If you name your male character Driftwood, it actually gives you a little piece of driftwood. If you name a female character T, you get a, a cup of tea or something like that. <laughs> Oh, I must have been testing this because I started with it. Whatever, we'll take it. Actually, I'll give it to uh, give it to Jinx. Yeah, boy. Unlock our enchanting thing, but we get that really quick. I think I already showed this off today. We can play piano. Ooh. It doesn't quite match the background music. Play Rude Buster on the piano. Play the Entertainer, one octave. Ask Teddy about something. How do I turn off the burp sounds? We'll turn them on, actually. What's with the snaw snaw sounds? All mouth crafted. <laughs> let's, let's shake up the. There we go. You already have a shake water. 
get some items here. If we use the driftwood, it gives you this fake game over screen. But if you say, yup, GG bro, you get the real game over screen. But these other two, like, it defaults to this one. What? Wait, why? I don't know. There's an Easter egg. You can buy food rations here and whatnot. Some spring water. This is all the help files. And then some uh, some tropes. All useful information. And then you can look at a world map. It's It gets changed, so this will have to be updated quite a bit. I want to do something with this little area, but I'm not going to try to limit the player's storage very much, so I don't think that'll be an issue. You obtained a bone chip. Here's Ecomin. He's conveniently hiding on the chalkboard. If you talk to Doc Weez, then he'll give you the enchanting station. And he gives you an empowering gem. And all the books, all of the books are like, give you tips on the game. Information about the game. It's our little help tutorial zone. You could just walk right out and skip all that if you want. So now you can see that since we've initialized, we're a little tiny dude. We are smaller on the world map. We're gonna claim some stations. Build a quarry here. We're gonna build a livestock farm. We don't have the stuff to keep it running, so it'll say we ran out of hay. We need fishing poles. Need to do something with that lighthouse, that tower there. Let's get the lumber mill. Notice the weather effect kicked in. That's good. So we walk into this town. It starts snowing. Oh, we have to change the, uh, the sprite size from walking into here. Okay, I'm going to keep the game running, but I'm going to fix that before I forget. So when we walk into the village building system, something can happen. Uh, for our auto run, it's going to do this. Right? copy this little section which changes the enemy the the actor images back we need to do that for any any map we can zoom into so that would mean the town the port town we'll just put it right inside of the auto run that's already happening right there the actor images should be switched back to regular size also I don't know if I did that for the graveyard I might have already done that for the graveyard I already did that for the graveyard, okay, that's fine. But we'll just keep going. I made this little animation in H-Bright, that's so cool. It's a super basic animation. Only thing that you see is the wind moving like some moss growing off of the bottom or weeds growing off of it. Did I claim the lumber mill? I already own it. Okay, it's producing logs every 45 seconds. And we get notifications with the gab window instead of show text, otherwise we get stopped so often that we get stuff. Couldn't you pause the BGM when you play the piano? Yeah, we could do that, but there's no BGM in the game right now. The music that's playing in the background is because I have a, uh, I have it playing, like, uh, through YouTube, right? The game has no BGM right now. I haven't made any for any BGM for it. I have one track, but I don't put it in. Uh, I haven't put it in yet. Vaporwave the Seed Man. We need to put Vaporwave somewhere in a cave. He sells the seeds. Now that we talked to um, Doc Weez inside the tutorial area, he's unlocked the enchantment area. Kalima37 just subscribed. Thank you so much for that subscription. I really appreciate that. Very nice of you. 
and we can use I don't like how this is very very menu based like we literally have to select the empowering gem and then we have to unequip our weapon it's very clunky I'm going to remake this system it works it works fine like we'll take the pink rod off we go here and select the empowering gem I just don't like how it shows it like this and then we select the rod, and then do you want to empower it? Yep, enchant the weapon. And boom. Yep, you've successfully upgraded it. Now it's a level 2 weapon, and it increases the stats and the chance that the weapon unleashed triggers. So it, it does upgrade it, but it's like clunky to do the whole thing. Like, you gotta go through all your items, find the enchant orb, and then, then you have to remember to unequip your weapons and put your weapons back on. It's not exactly like I want it to be yet, but it's like the general rough draft, but less less menu based. I would like to be able to, to section these off to just show items that can be used. You know, don't show every item. Like we're not gonna, you know, try to process the spider fang, but we. But I want it to be able to show a list of things that you like. I don't think we can process that because it's used for other things. We can process the orange. And we create orange juice, and we can process like apples and carrots, and and upgrade those items, right? You get states for using those items. Chops carrots. Mm, now I have a carrot buff. Chest of saws. We need to open those. Seventeen lumber saws. I must have uh, given these to the character at the beginning of the game. What else do I have? Thermal jewel. Oh, let's socket that. Did I take away the helmet? Yeah. These things can't be socketed. You have to get a helmet to socket the gym. Obviously the player's not going to start with all of this stuff. This is just so that I can test him consistently. Let's go test the, the dungeon system. Oh, we can test our farm system here. We can plant seeds. Same thing. Too many items are being shown. I think I should just be very specific and show text. And let the player pick from a, a, like a show text menu. You, know, you can still put graphics in the text. You can still show the icons, and then you don't have to cycle through all of this. We're not going to plant, you know, strange liquids, or we're not going to plant a saw on the ground. So we don't need to show that on the list and force the player to go through it over and over. So this, once again, it's not final version, rough draft, but it does work though. You can plant food. We have to plant the seeds though, not the actual like fresh carrot. We tried to plant a carrot, didn't work. We have to plant carrot seeds. Tells you the percentage of how far along they are in growing. They'll keep growing while you're doing other stuff. So we'll continue on, claim this apple tree. This will produce apples every and oranges here. Every three minutes we'll get one, which we can use to process. Eventually we're gonna make a system right here where we can sell our goods. Not just straight sell, but auction them. You, you put up a price, and then if the price is right, people will come and buy them from you. Kind of high treasure chest using the Terax lighting so that you have to like explore a little bit to find the treasure chest. Those are test battles. But you'll have to go down here. And you get it, if you look on the menu, there's no crafting system here, but there is one in the game. You just have to unlock it. You have to rescue Devin Scott, the tinkerer. These battles are mostly skippable, except for this one. Did I ever put a battle background in here? Yeah, I did, okay. Got him. We're like level 10. We should start at one, but you know, testing stuff. David Scott. We should have him say, like, help! Let me out! Like, 
say something like, if you help me, I'll give you something. Like, he'll do, he'll teach you how to craft things. Like, I'm a very clever individual. Help me out of here, and I'll show you a few things. Thanks for rescuing me. I'll be waiting in town. Boom! You've obtained the Tinkerer's Kit, and you've unlocked crafting. And now, if you go here, you've got the Synthesis option, and you can craft different things. I need to add more recipes, too. Can we craft any armor yet? Nah, you can make rings, though, and... Should make the helmet be part of the Your thing. Character we is starving. Oh, we're starving. We gotta press E to eat. We're out of food rations. Oh no, we're about to GG, bro. So you can put yourself in a situation where you're kind of screwed. Character starving should be long enough to, unless you're in a cave. That's something to consider too. All of the stores will sell food rations. You can get food rations randomly in chests. Um, every time you go to the merchant, please don't die. Please don't die. Don't die. We're almost there. What'll it be, mate? Buy food rations. There we go. Let's get some food rations. He sells random six random items from his list of items. Pseudo-random. I, I pick six items. Um, and then, like, I roll a number. And then, like, you've got, like, just different lists of shop processing. So he'll always sell food rations. We can press E to automatically eat one really quickly. Or we can go in here and go to food rations and eat them, but I didn't, that felt a little clunky, so I'm just going to press E. And if you want to turn off the little burp sound effect, there's a special toggle for people who don't want to hear burps. We can go up to the classroom and, and turn off burps. It should work. Let's, let's see if it works. Oh yeah, that's just, Teddy's the one you have to talk. How do I turn off the burps? Turn them off. Okay. So now if we eat, it sounds like a biting into an apple. Yeah, that's why I allow people to turn it off, Albrick. Now if we press eat, it just makes like a nom nom and then they bite an apple. So there's no more burps if you don't want burps. But if, you, if you're okay with burps or you like burps, you can tell Teddy, uh, how do I turn off the burp sound and you can turn it back on. So that if you want to hear it, it's there. <laughs> Turn it off for now. It's optional. You don't have to hear the burps. I'll turn it off by default. Yeah, yeah. By default, it'll be the apple bite. 9 out of 10, too much burps. <laughs> Oh gosh. If you're on the right map, we have conditionals, we have a player tracker. You see how there's an animation playing? There's animation playing when you when you harvest things. And those animations will not play unless you're on the specific map and within a range. Otherwise you'd have like these coin animations and these thing and other animations playing on random events. Because if you know how the show animation works, it, it looks for an event number. So you say event number three when you go to another map. Event number three is going to be something completely different. And it will still show that. So you have to check the player's X, Y location. And like in this case, the map ID of the player as a parallel process, which we're doing in a common event. We're calling as uh, common events to, to do different things. So all of these are like parallel process that are happening in common events when switches are turned, up, turned on. And we're creating income. But we have no more food rations, so what we're going to have to do is find a way to generate food rations, right? So we can go here and set up a kitchen if we have the logs and the money. We don't have enough logs for that. Do we have enough stone to set this up? We don't have enough stone for that. So we can go to the merchant, and every minute his wares will change. So we can just keep checking him. Eventually he's going to sell um, logs or stone, in which case, you know, until then, you're gonna have to catch it, or you're gonna have to buy food rations. Buying food rations will, um, it's the most expensive way to keep your town fed by buying the rations themselves. But it's much better to get a sushi bar set up and a little bar set up so that you can have fish and meat being produced using, uh, using that. 
got cabbages. We get experience for harvesting plants too, by the way, so we can level up our character by harvesting food. We keep, like, timing. It's not showing it, right? Come on. There it is. 409 in experience for harvesting crops. Early on, early on it'll be um, very lucrative as far as experience-wise. But later on as you level up, it seems like you get less and less experience because, you know, it gets incrementally harder. This whole time we're going to be uh, raking in logs from the logging mill. So here he's selling stone. We've got 12 already, but we'll buy like 10 more. We need some hay too. He's selling hay now. Hay now. So we'll set up a sushi bar here. We have to make a one-time payment of a thousand coins and 20 stone. We do that, boom, it's set up. We have a sushi bar, you don't need to do anything here. It'll automatically take 10 coins and a raw fish from you every like minute or two and produce five food rations. So as long as you have raw fish, he will continue to um, produce food rations. So we need to get enough logs. We don't have enough logs. How much do we have? We have nine. Uh, over, over time, we'll get those logs, even if we don't um, have to, you know, we don't exactly have to buy them. Because we own a quarry, the quarry will produce stone, so we didn't have to buy any stone in enough time. But it wouldn't hurt to just initially buy them to get them to produce food rations. Because once you're keeping your um, your docks producing fish and your um, livestock farm provide with uh, hay. So you need fishing poles and hay and you're providing those with those resources. They're going to generate raw meat and raw, and raw fish. And then the sushi bar and the, and the other like bar and grill is going to produce food rations. And then the food rations will produce money. So like you'll have like a big circle once you set it up. Five food rations have been produced. We have 10 raw fish remaining. Did I already purchase this mine? I think so. And there's a chance to lose pickaxes. You can pause and stop the mine, but I don't know if I want to put that on all of the things because sometimes it won't really make a difference. Like the, there's no benefit to pausing like your fishing docks because the only way, the only place you're going to be using your fishing poles is on the docks. I allowed the player to pause the, the production of the mine because the quarry also takes pick, pickaxes. So I also need to allow the ability to pause the, the quarry. Since they're using the same resource, maybe we don't need stone, salt, and granite. We need, um, we need ore and, um, what are the other things that you can get? Diamonds? Or coal and diamonds, then we want to pause the quarry so we can use our pickaxes on the mine. It's a small little quality of life feature, and I think I should add it. See, we can pause it, stop the mine. The mine is stopped, it will no longer consume pickaxes, but it will also won't produce anything else. So we can start it again. Eventually, we're going to get enough lumber to go here. and have this guy make us a boat. We need to put a guy in here, we need an NPC for here, and we need an NPC in the general store to sell stuff. But this guy, we'll talk to him, he'll be over here working or something, banging hammer, and um, we'll provide him with like a lot, like a hundred wooden logs. And with the hundred wooden logs, he'll make us a simple boat. And we can take the boat from here, and then the boat will let us travel onto the world map. And the, it'll let us travel in the shallows. So we can use the boat to go around the island as well as go to the, um, the island to the south. I want to incorporate like pressing M to show the map. Right now you have to like look at a map. Just, I'll show you in the classroom. Oh, we need to change the classroom. We need to add that event to the classroom as well. But 
you get the boat and you'll be able to sail around the island as well as go south to the other island. Uh, this is where we're going to have two other lumber spots, but instead of basic logs, they'll be like um, high quality wood. I think I'll call it like ash lumber or pine wood or something like that. And with, with what's, what's a good, it's very, very strong oak, right? So we'll call it like oak lumber. And then we'll have like two mining points, you know, two, two, uh, yeah, mining points, two mines, and also a couple of logging points, and as well as one town here. And this town will be a bigger town, Ebony, that's a good one, Vincent. And uh, this town will, will be where we get like, I don't know, like two or three hundred high quality wood, as well as a hundred of the regular wood, and like a lots of resources, right, and some money. Then you make a ship, so you have to like really spend a lot of time making the ship. But once you get the ship, you'll be able to sail around. And uh, then you'll be able to have access to most of the entire map at, at that point. And then some point later on, you'll have access to an airship. I don't know how or when, but like at some point you'll have access to an airship. Let me show you my special move, please don't. Yeah, show me how to slay. Now you try. Excellent job. Take this as a reward. I made it myself. You get a strange liquid. Don't ask what it is. It's a strange liquid. Does the game have a story? It doesn't really have a story right now. It's going to. It will have a story. I have the premise of the story. But as far as like intro, like you're the mayor of a town, you could rename your town. We'll just be like, uh, and then whenever you reference that, it'll it'll show that name as well. Before I forget, when we go into the classroom. wherever that is at. It's the tutorial zone. Tutorial classroom. We need to have something added to our auto run event. This is a one time auto run. So we need another auto run. What is this? This is a parallel scene if we're pressing stuff. Okay. So I need another auto run. I think I have another one actually. This is an auto run. No, this is just the location of the name. So we'll put an auto run here. But we need the um, like the, the sprite size changer thing. So we'll copy this part of the event. Tutorial classroom. Paste that in there. And it checks to see if we picked male or female. If we check the battle toaster, it stays the same. I don't know. If you're going with that battle toaster, you don't really care about a detail like that. And that way when we walk in, it doesn't keep the super small sprite. Right. Let's test the battle system real quick. Let's generate a dungeon. Since we got the Tinkerer, he's in town now. Let's use a level one keystone. And it randomly generates maps. We're about to starve. I need to, uh... Nom nom nom. I'm out of food rations, so that's not good. All of the chests are kind of hidden. Most of them, anyway. But And there's no random encounters, but if you want to battle, you have to open the chest. So you say, give me the loot, you fight the battle. And it will be, um... It'll scale as you go up. So in the first, uh, the first map that is picked randomly, the the enemies will be the same. So these are level ones, and as we go to the next, the loot is also randomized. You can get like any anything of like sixty to seventy items. Let's just make it to the next level real quick. Hold on, let's not proceed yet. Not right now, because I want to pick up the 
Collectibles. We have a little bit of a collectible system in here. Pixie dust. It's a little bit um, grotesque because we get like pixie wing. Is that what it was? Pixie wing or is it pixie dust? I think it's pixie dust. Pixie wing would be a little grotesque. Pixie dust, yeah. Happy thoughts. Think of happy thoughts. And these will be used as a <clears throat> an alternate currency in it, like the fairy town for Jinx. Since we went through the next level, now we're going to be fighting level 2 creatures. The map is, is random picking, so we'll get the same map eventually. We'll come across the same map, but there's like 20 different maps that you can end up getting in the, in the, the first like random generation thing. The loot's random. Let's proceed to the next level. Stuff of nightmares. We'll have little Easter eggs, a sprite art throughout that do different things for no real reason, just to have them. The skills are action sequence and custom animations and stuff. We started at level 10, the player's not going to start at level 10, but we just sort of did, because I wanted to blaze through it real quick. At some point, I will actually do, this was a test. This was just a test, to show like a fade out effect. A lot of things need to be removed. Let's go ahead and move on to harder, harder fights. Now we're fighting level 4 creatures, I believe. The basic attacks have a chance to um, use a weapon unleash. So they just do a basic attack, but um, it's like 10% to start, and then as you upgrade your weapons, they become more likely to be upgraded. Fighting level 5 creatures. Double wave. Got granite. Hey, that's worth a thousand. We're out of food rations. Zero remaining. So we probably need to have a some a check and balance so that we don't keep getting that message that we're getting a hundred coins even when we can't afford to feed the village sounds like a, a bug in there I'm gonna pay attention and if I get that message again notice that I'm getting a hundred coins without having food rations I need to put a conditional I need to encapsulate the the thing that consumes the food rations. Oh, okay, because we're getting food rations, right? Because we're producing them, but they're getting used up really quickly. So while we have them, I should use them. I should eat some. Yes, the town will starve, but we'll, we'll be okay. We won't die. Okay. Makes more sense. There's the weapon unleash. Bang, bang. It's a double attack, and it does more damage. We leveled up to 11, oh my god. Random loot, out of bolt cloth. Jinx is OP. She's got an item that's a one out of 100 uh, drop. I just started the player with it. So now we're moving on to level seven, which is, you know, could you, we could still hit the same maps, but the enemies will change. Ruling claws, bang, bang. Got strawberries. Hey, hey, we got like a Bambi creature. Forgot what it was called. Right. 
Scavenge? Oh yeah, you can spend your TP to find an item. We found a food ration. So that's one way to not like starve in a weird situation so you don't kind of fork yourself over. You can actually get food rations with your with your TP. Let's do Blade Storm. You don't need to, but we're gonna do it. We spent some time taking action sequences from other projects that I've uh, spent time on making. So I'm reusing assets that I put in, that I've made in other games. I'm bringing them over and then changing graphics and, and incorporating them. Let's go to level eight. This entire battle system is optional. You don't actually have to battle anything if you don't want to do any battles. You can still play the game without battling. But I wanted it to be very good so that people were like, and, and rewarding so that people feel like they want to at least dip their toes in the battle system. We're using Olivia's battle system with just a, a few minor adjustments. Let's go to level 9. Uh, not yet. I actually want to show one of the... Because every every level has their own enemies. So I want to show off a level 9 creature. Let's Blade Storm this. Get Blade Storm. We're doing less and less damage because they're getting more and more defense as we get higher. Here's where we get to level 10. I think this is boss level. I don't know if I updated this yet. Is, are we still fighting level 9 or are we going back to level 1? Oh no, Trickster Imp. Right, Trickster Imp. 10 enemies and then we have a boss. But the boss fight isn't actually, like it's created, I have the boss. I haven't put him anywhere in the game yet. Besides like a test event. So at any point, when you want to leave the dungeon, you can. You can be like, hey, I just want to exit the dungeon, or if you say not right now, I'll put you back uh, a step. Proceed to the next level. Now it would go to level 11, but because there is no 11th, the 11th creature is actually not actually in the system yet. It starts it over. So this is level one creatures again. We got the weapon unleashed. Bang. Get tracked. 3,000 on a crit. So it was a level 11 versus a level 1. And we got the weapon unleashed. That actually crit. So it just obliterated. That thing has like 100 HP. Here's another collectible. We're using um, Terax lighting and different layers of, of, of colored lighting. So that they have different glows. Here is where we can get the blacksmith. Which I want to show off. go over here open the chest it appears that someone was locked inside this chest oh my I'm not even gonna ask how this happened the blacksmith jumps out I want to do like a little whoop sound effect and it's showing him jump jumping out instead of just popping out but this is fine for now I was just starting to get cozy well I guess I should head to town now after all I am a powerful blacksmith flex so we got the blacksmith he's now in town and he'll turn stuff over into ingots we pull the switch that opens up a a gate over here. This section was actually gated off. There's, but you can um, choose to go backwards a little bit and go this way. There's no random encounter, so you can, you're free to explore. If you want to fight, you have to. I mean, if you want to fight, you can open the chest. And to actually open the chest, you have to fight. So if you want the loot, you got to fight. I made this little map in here, which I was making the the coral have like this little glow. So there's like a little mini room in here. I want to do something else special besides just a chest in here. So this would be like a little secret area. We had Jeff in there, but I think we moved him out. All right, let's go ahead and exit the dungeon at this point. Exit the dungeon. If you die, you don't game over. You just get sent back here. 
for the, the battle system. You can game over. You start your character, you game over, and that's it. Um, do we have enough lumber now to... Wait, we have a problem here. I've never seen this one. It might have something to do with Galv's message styles. That's a, that's a shame. I didn't get to show off the blacksmith. I wanted to show the blacksmith. I didn't expect to encounter a bug. Well, I have something to figure out. Is it because of Galv's message styles? Change window dimensions? Probably. Darn it. Maybe we can move it. Maybe we can move it. If not, I'll turn it off, and we'll have to deal without it. You ran out of memory? Oh, you know what it could have been? There is a memory leak in my preloader core. Yep. The, the preloader core I'm using is some random dudes, and that's probably what happened. Yeah, that's a shame. I need to get a better preloader core. So I'll probably be turning these two plugins off, unfortunately, which is going to give me another um, bug, but at least it won't crash the game. Gonna be a battle toaster real quick. This is the the boss battle that we didn't get to see and I wanted to show it real quick. Kinetic focus. Blade storm. Annoying buzz. He does damage based on his own attacks. Ooh, hits himself. It's like she flies around and buzzes him, and he's like trying to swat at her, but he hits himself in the face, takes damage. So the damage for annoying buzz is based on the. Per it's the it, like Jinx's attack power isn't used. It's the target that she's flying around. The attack power is used like so. It's B dot ATK. <laughs> to do something really quick. No more questions. Okay, we're just going to jump out. I'm going to walk straight to... I need to, to, to just get this and see. Some wooden logs. Let's hope the merchant is selling them right now. At the beginning... If you get to the to the guy within the first minute, he sells almost everything. But then er, after a minute, he picks random and he just gets like six different things. I did this so that I can do stuff like this and test. So I can buy 20 logs. 20 wood. Or 20 stone. That works. And I kept Galv's message on. It was a it was a resource error. It ran out of resources. So what is the preload core? Man. Okay. I, I did expect that though. So we have that bug where it doesn't show the, the face graphics sometimes. We switch and it changes the graphics. See the face graphics gone. So that. If we press it again, it'll be there, but. I need to preload core so that it loads face graphics between everything. Like they just stay in memory. That's what I want. We switch scenes. 
press escape, sometimes the face graphic isn't there. Go back to the world map, press escape. It's there now, but like for the first time you open it, it's not going to be there. Minor thing, very, very minor, doesn't change the game, but still something that will bother me. Just being like, well, how come there's no face graphic? They didn't put a face, and maybe that's the only time they check. I don't want to leave it like that. Anyway, guys, I've gone over quite a bit. It's been two and a half hours. Um, I got to end the live stream right now. Thank you guys for coming to the live stream. I really appreciate it. Thumbs up on this video on YouTube. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on twitch.tv slash gaming, that'd be very much appreciated. Uh, any subs subscriptions are also appreciated. If you'd like to support what I do on this channel, you can go to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash gaming. I offer different services as reward tiers there. You can check them out if you like. If not, come hang out on the Discord. We are there talking. There's lots of game devs there. There's got some, lots of good artists and talented programmers and, and just good game designers there. So really, really... Um, Love to have you come hang out in the Discord. Links in the description below for all of the things. The website's there. Uh, I'm on Twitter.com slash Driftwood Gaming. Uh, yeah, we're going to make it short and sweet because I'm, I'm really running over today. I stream Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. Most of the time, except for a few holidays or when T wants to do a, a day off or something. Um, yeah. You guys are awesome. Remember to stay awesome. We'll see you guys in the Discord. Thanks for coming to the live stream. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Take care, Ren. Omni Slash, Flash, Krillin' It. That glowing water, though. Yeah, that was a pretty good scene. I liked it. The It's uh, Terax lighting for that. Albrick, thanks for coming in. Vincent, really appreciate the super chat today. Mad Labs. Absolute Mad Labs. Lockwork. Do you have a tutorial for auto tile sets? Um, I think my wife does. If, if she doesn't, then she hasn't put it out yet. So she's Tease Jams. I think I have a link in the description for her YouTube channel as well. Give Give In. Thanks for coming to the live stream. Chiefy Chief. Thanks for coming. Jeremiah Black, appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Ekuman, Big Honcho, Will Black, always a pleasure, my man. It looks like I'm in 8600. I agree. I agree about the uh, battle system. Exactly. All right, guys. Bye. We'll see you tomorrow.